Okay, are you working on anything currently right now? In what way? Artwork? I'm writing Artwork, a variety writing. of things. I'm writing, and where should I be looking? In the camera? Uh, either in the camera right here. Your choice. Uh, I'm writing uh, the Sandman Mystery Theater monthly for DC, which is a revamp of uh, the Golden Age Sandman character. Uh, basically, I'm doing crime noir stories set in the late 30s, which is pre-World War II. This will be an ongoing series? Yeah, for now. Or my involvement on it is for now, but I'm sure they intend to continue it even if I don't. Uh, I'm going to, I think, but okay. pending contractual negotiations. Uh, I've seen since uh, the end of, of War Child that Grindel, the Grindels that have been solicited so far by other people, the uh, Grindel Tales, I believe it's called. Uh -huh. Are you going to be having any involvement in that? Yeah, um, my involvement with that is that I'm basically the creative director on that. Right. I, I pick the people that get to work on it. I oversee everything they do. I, I read everything and, and make sure that it all fits into what I know about the, the world of Grindel. Um, with the first series, uh, it was written by James Robinson, and it's a six issue mini series, and it's painted by a Danish animator fellow named Teddy Christensen. And I'm doing painted covers for that series over Teddy's uh, pencil designs. And the story was going to continue into the future? It's set in that same milieu, yeah. Uh, it doesn't really continue that much as far as time wise beyond what we had before, but. Someone, I think it was Diana Schutz, mentioned the possibility of like Hunter Rose backup stories for Grindel Tales at some point. No, it's not. Uh, it's not Hunter Rose backup stories. Um, it's uh, Grindel Prime, the one that's in War Child. Okay. As of the second, <clears throat> as of the second storyline, uh, I'm going to start doing a four-page painted backup series that will ultimately be uh, collected into a 48-page volume. That'll be uh, people's encounters and searches for. Uh, uh, Grindel Prime, the, the perfect Grindel of that world. Okay, uh, you just did the Batman Grindel crossover. I've heard it said that Grindel is your version of Batman. Is that true? Fairly, fairly. In, in a certain way, <clears throat> Grindel, um, you know, uh, basically with Mage and Grindel, I have uh, a god of light and a god of darkness. Um, Superman, Batman. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't call Grendel. I wouldn't call Batman like Grendel because Batman's. I don't. I don't see Batman as angst-ridden or or uh, or guilty or 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 evil in any way. In fact, any of these any of these portrayals where he's gritting his teeth and wondering about what he's doing just don't ring true to me at all. Right. You couldn't function in that sort of strange capacity if you weren't absolutely sure what you were doing was right. Um, and that's why I think the TV show does a very good job with it. He's not, you know, he's never lamenting about, you know, this or that, or, oh, I can't solve the world's problems. He solves the ones he solves. That's, right. that's what he can do, and he does it. Um, there's never a second thought in his mind. You enjoy writing the Batman character? It's fun, yeah. Uh, um, I think, it, again, it has to come down with it. Frank tends to not have as much... Uh, I tend to portray a little more elegance than Frank does. Frank tends to keep away from the world of the rich that Bruce Wayne must be involved with. Uh, I'll, I'll portray a little more of that than Frank does. Frank makes a little more... Uh, Butt kicking that I do. You know, a lot more lack of dialogue or more storytelling through the heart. Right, right, right. Direct result of what you being writer artist? I think so, yeah. Yeah. And, and trying to hone everything down to where there's no. Um, there's no part of the the total whole that is uh, extraneous. You know, every every part of it has to be vital. The the words, you know, the, there's this old thing about uh, give me a comic that I can I can tell what's going on without the words. Well, that's ridiculous. The words the words shouldn't repeat what's going on. But the words have to be as vital to the total flavor of what's happening as as the artwork. Yeah. Oh, I think it's very good. Uh, I quibble with them on a variety of points. Um, uh, at one point he maintains that anything we don't do for reproduction or survival is art, and I don't think that takes evil into account at all. <laughs> um, he has a little illustration there of... Uh, of cavemen sitting around bored and you know they're doing a variety of things that lead into the arts but you know 
What if a caveman was bored and got a field mouse and slowly pulled off all his toes one by one? I don't know if that would definitely earn these performance art. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Well, if you're a big Joe Coleman fan, you think so anyway. But, um, so, but I, it's certainly a noble and grand undertaking, uh, the book. And I think, he, I think he succeeds on a really surprisingly high amount of levels for such a... Uh, for such a grand scope, you know. Uh, what's the word on a second Batman Grendel crossover? Uh, I don't really want to talk about that. They'd cut that out too, because DC doesn't want to really. Yeah. I secret? can't talk about it in any official thing. I mean, I can talk to fans about it, but oh, okay. they don't want to really announce it until they announce it. Any Grendel crossovers outside of that spectrum? No, I don't. Whoa, sorry, man. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I don't really have any lined up right now, no. What about just Grendel in general? So if you're a personal involvement with Grendel besides that backup, are you planning on another story arc? Here you go. Uh, no, just that, the backup thing for now. Um, I've heard that the, your Grendel mythos goes back to the original Beowulf story. Yeah, kind of. It will. It, it well, will The, the storyline will carry back all the way that far? There's a... Uh, There's good English. <laughs> There's, yeah, I mean, we'll we'll go that far in the past eventually. Um, really, all I'm looking for with that is a primordial act of aggression, you know. Right. Uh, I mean, it, a Cain and Abel tale. Can it be said that that the current, well, that, that the Grendels that have been covered in the storyline are sort of the spirit of the original Grendel defeated by Beowulf? I'm sorry, say that again. The uh, like Hunter Rose and Christine Spar and Grendel Prime, or the spirit that travels through them, did that start with the the Beowulf that's, creature? That's what I will hope to define ultimately one day. Yeah, you know. Okay. I, I, I haven't written that part myself yet, uh, so I don't okay. feel like that. <laughs> with, right. You know, with me, everything's uh, every everything so far as my creative life is a, a journey of discovery for me, and uh, so I almost don't know stuff until it happens to me uh, on on paper. Okay. How's Mage doing? Brewing. Brewing? <laughs> so we can hope for a Mage 2 in the future? Yeah. Eventually. Kelly can tell you all about it. He's halfway through with it right now. Oh, is he? And character I should have left. A few years back, you had like an excerpt from a Grendel novel. What's the, whatever happened to it? It's sitting on the shelf. It needs a good rewriter more. Uh, the reason it never followed through was a big argument with my editor at Valentine. I couldn't get along. And How about a Grendel or Mage movie? Because they're all both very cinematic characters. Yeah, I, I hear I hear glimmers of interest every now and then, but you know that's that's no money in pocket or or ink on paper. Um, and even even if you have money in pocket and ink on paper, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to end up on screens. <laughs> Not really right now. Those are uh, those are both Mage and Grendel are pretty a pretty large tableau of opportunity for me to do a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, uh, I assume I'll finish the aerialist at some time. Uh, and in fact, my intent with that was a, a trilogy of stories, uh, all dealing with that world, not necessarily with the aerialist. So. Can you have a table of you uh, first wrote the first few stories? Do you envision this entire span? No, no, no. I, I imagine it would continue. Um, when I originally did Hunter Rose, I hadn't really planned on the continuation. About halfway through, I kind of figured it out, um, and that's where Christine Spar arose. But then it was after I'd done the first two incarnations, I realized I couldn't keep doing it like this. I couldn't just keep handing the, the mask on to the next person in line. I had to do something more complex, uh, which is what led to the, the development of it as an icon in that world and becoming a, a term of social rank and, and just trying to flip everything around to where, uh, you know, in the original version, Grendel was one of the most heinous terms, and in the future version, it's one of the most honorable terms. Um, so just try to maintain the original aspect, which was, uh, you know, does, does violence and being a villain necessarily make you a villain? So. Okay, how about the the genesis of the mage character? We noticed the physical resemblance to the to the artist here. Uh, how did the rest of the character come together? Step by step, um, it's even more self-defining than than Grendel. Um, 
idea originally just started as a variety of ideas, and I found that if I made it look like myself, I could impart a lot of character to it. Um, and uh, so it'll it'll continue. He'll go bald. He'll get married. Um, <laughs> Great. Uh, he, it's a, it's a mage is a story of growth, and you'll you'll definitely see that. Any mage Grindel crossovers? No, never, 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 ever, ever, never, ever. Two completely different halves of my brain that will never mesh. Notice a parallel between you and George Lucas. Everybody wants Lucas to make his next set of Star Wars movies. He wants to wait for the right time. And I got all Lucas. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if he's really interested in Megan. <laughs> he doesn't seem to be very active, you know. Here's my favorite one, but he says only two. I mean, he merchandises a lot of stuff, but he didn't really do any new stories, you know. On the Star Wars thing, I noticed there's a lot of Star Wars influence on the lives of Grendel. That's just stealing future tech stuff, you know. Not, not much more than that. Anything else? Uh, unless there's anything you want to say. I mean, that's all our questions. We, no. we, we invite any comment. <laughs> mine's, my mind's kind of numb at this point. So. Alright, <laughs> uh, that's a good question. We always ask much more. Do you look at they had any experience with censorship or having their stuff curved? Sure, everybody's got uh, problems with censorship. In fact, in um, in Sam and Mystery Theater, in the third issue, I have a I have a very rough and tough, nasty cop uh, use the word nigger. And this is in 1938, and DC wanted me to take it out or make it darky or uh, coon or something, something nowhere near as I mean offensive enough in itself, but just doesn't have the venom that nigger has, the casual venom that nigger has. And um, and I I talked them out of it and to let me use keep the word. But uh, it wasn't until the last minute, and so they had to send the word nigger up to the printer and have them strip it in on the press, which I thought was suitably embarrassing for them trying to, to Rosie, to censor me. So, so they got their little hellfire. <laughs> Are there any other characters in either DC or Marvel that you'd like to do a take on, or they asked you to do it? Uh, yeah, there was talk of me uh, working on the big guy in the blue tights a couple years ago, but uh, gee, they did all sorts of crap to him, didn't they? So. Breaking the rules for you here. It's it's the same problem. I always say that. Uh, I always tell people, uh, they say, they ask, should I go to art school? And I tell them, well, art school has a plus and a minus. The plus is that it puts you in with a variety of other artists, which is a good uh, expanding experience, but it tends to lead you to believe that in four years they're going to give you a little slip of paper, and that's it, you're going to be an artist then, you know, and that's that's go that's bull. Have either one of you ever discovered anybody that, that made it? Anybody, anybody that came to you, showed, showed you their work, and they're now... I've often used people in the book that, I mean, most people that have ended up on Grendel have been uh, friends of the panders on the uh, on the mage tour I did uh, several years ago I happened to uh, see some character sketches at a at a shop on the tour and uh, it was by Arnold Pander and I called them up and gave him a job Matt, earlier I heard you, before we started talking, I heard you talking to somebody about a Batman Adventures cartoon or something like that. Possibly working on. Is that oh, I had, I had spoken to the head writer at one point about uh, <clears throat> adapting the yeah, faces storyline that I did. That. Uh, they just got picked up for another three years, so maybe there's a chance we'll get around to doing that. I pictured it as a two-parter, and it would, you know, be two facing the freaks. And it's a little dark, though. I probably have to tone it down quite a bit. Not a lot of violence in it, though. Well, actually, there is a lot of violence. Um, well, I, guess, I think so. I would hope so. Actually, the whole Brindle thing would be great with that Don't kind of inside. Inside. Yeah. Huh? The whole, the whole Brindle world and that kind of... Please have your attention. Yeah. 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 Is there any chance of Brindle being on the show? I'm sorry, what? Brindle ever being on the show? No. Batman 492, Platinum.